Hello, this is the Trade Site U.S. Stocks and Futures Market Preview for Thursday, the 26th of May and Friday, the 27th of May, 2016. Just so you're aware, Monday obviously is the Memorial Day holiday. Markets are closed here on Monday. Tuesday was then the 31st, so we're coming back from the holiday. First day back from the holiday can be light anyways for the last day of the month of window dressing. So I wouldn't expect Tuesday to be interesting. And we don't usually do previews for... Thursday going into Friday, we combine it with this one because most of what we've expected for the week has played out by the time we get to Thursday. This week's no exception, and even more so because Friday everybody's going to be heading out early uh, for the long weekend. So starting to heat up around the country. People are starting to enjoy the weather, and uh, everybody's getting away from whatever. Here's a look at the ES front month futures contract. This is e-signal 12 as usual. Daily chart of the uh, contract. So we had the 13 sell signal two months ago. Use the risk line as resistance. Technically, the sell signal is still in play. Obviously, you could say from a time perspective, it's already done its thing. It's not actually given the total uh, target of the signal, meaning we don't have a new nine bar startup to the downside and we haven't hit the red line down below. Uh, so it's an interesting look here to be bouncing, but we're still under the risk line. It'll be interesting to see if we can get a close above that and then take out that high, that day's high the next day. That would terminate that, that signal, but we'll see. Uh, two, rally, two big rally days. We'll look at the, uh, we didn't have a report yesterday, so we'll look at the intraday action here in a few minutes. Let's go through the rest of everything. Uh, crude oil closed at 49.57. That's almost a one-year high at this point on crude oil, up about five, 5 cents on the session. Uh, gold was up $9.10, bouncing right off of that red static trend line. So the S&P was up 14 and a half, but again, a lot of it was a gap. Today was not, Monday, uh, sorry, Wednesday was not nearly as interesting as Tuesday. The both days gap. We'll look at that in a minute. You can see the gaps better here on the NDX, the NASDAQ 100. Obviously, the actual trading range on Wednesday was much smaller than the range on Tuesday, but it was up 32 points. SOX up three. Here's where the breakout's coming from. Cup and handle formation on the SOX. Not usually what leads the market, but in this case, it seems to be. Biotechs have curled back up. Watch out what happens when that hits that green static trend line, though, especially if we get a new nine bar startup phase. Uh, to the upside, and we are currently seven candles up, as you can see. So Thursday and Friday could give us the uh, that termination there on the biotechs. The VIX down 52 cents to 1390. Uh, the trend closed real low at 0.59. 10-day moving average is still 1.16. NASDAQ volume 1.6 billion shares, the lightest day of the week so far. Again, when Tuesday was much more interesting than Wednesday as a trading session. Advanced decline ratio was positive 169. I'm sorry. Positive 819 on the uh, Nasdaq, and positive 1100, 1111, 1111 on the New York. Google up five bucks. Apple up a dollar 72, breaking out into that gap. Amazon up four dollars and 15 cents. You know, it's interesting for all the uh, talk about how bad the economy is. Markets are perking up here. That is very, very interesting. Netflix gained two dollars and thirty-one cents. All right, let's take a look at the intraday action on the uh, futures over the last two days since we didn't do one of these last night. On the five-minute candles, you can see that on uh, Tuesday we gapped up and then shoved a lot harder pretty early on. It was a big morning for us on Tuesday. Had a lot of stocks working great, futures great, and then of course the second half of the day was fairly flat. We tried to pop a little bit later on and then settled back down. Wednesday again a gap and go session, although this was not nearly as powerful. It faded out after it fizzled out after the first hour, and the rest of the day was entirely flat. And the volume, as I said, was lower, so not nearly as interesting as uh, Tuesday. So hopefully, we still have one more good trading day in us in the form of Thursday for the uh, for the week, because obviously, I do not expect Friday to be that interesting. But we will see what happens in terms of economic data that's still coming out this week. We have uh, on Thursday we have the Initial and continuing jobless claims, that's the weekly number. Durable orders, that's all at 8.30 a.m., an hour before the market opens. We've got pending home sales 30 minutes in. We've got natty gas an hour in. And then on Friday, the second look at GDP from the first quarter, that's not a big deal. They're expecting 0.9% and 30 minutes in Michigan sentiment. So nothing huge here for the rest of the week, just straight up trading. But like I said, hopefully Thursday. Because, again, Friday, start to head out for the long weekend. Monday we're closed, Tuesday, first day back from a long weekend, and it's the end of the month. That's never very exciting. Everybody have a great rest of your trading week.